Greetings, brothers and sisters, and welcome to our Priesthood of All Believers series. Uh, our theme for this time will be Make Disciples. Uh, and we'll look at Jesus's great commission in Matthew 28, where he commanded his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. And we are looking at, uh, as the priesthood of all believers, how we are reborn to serve. And as a part of that, uh, how we have a passion to multiply. And discipleship is the mechanism of multiplication. That is what it means to multiply, is to make disciples. And this season after Pentecost, as we come to the uh, end of this church year, uh, we are um, concluding our reflections on uh, the um, priesthood of all believers and thinking of exalting our king, particularly exalting the king and uh, honoring him as our Lord. Um, and as our Lord, he has sent us uh, and we make disciples. All of these themes and teachings come from this bigger story of God, our sacred roots. The whole left side of this is what God has done, the triune God and his story in scripture. The whole right side of this is how we respond, what uh, we do and how we participate in this story. And these eight uh, themes, these eight topics really cover uh, in broad strokes, the whole story of God. Uh, and we are reflecting particularly on being reborn to serve, uh, affirming the church's unity, engaging in radical hospitality, extravagant generosity and apostolic witness to the unreached. Um, and it's this last one, apostolic witness to the unreached, uh, that concerns us when we are talking about going and making disciples, fulfilling the Great Commission. So we'll look at the story in Matthew 28, uh, 16 through 20. Uh, we'll exegete that text, we'll explore the theme in scripture, and we'll experience one of the theme's takeaways. This is a fairly well-known text. Uh, Jesus has uh, died on the cross. He has been buried. Uh, at the beginning of Matthew 28, he is uh, shown to be uh, arisen from the dead. The women go and visit the tomb. It's empty. Um, and he is appearing to his disciples. Um, and he told them uh, to go ahead of him to the mountain in Galilee, and he would meet them there. And it says, now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And so they're, they're up on a mountain uh, with a good, clear view. You can just sort of imagine being able to see for miles and miles around. Um, and they worship him there. Um, and there's, there's some doubt. This is like a Matthew's small reference to uh, what John explores in full with Thomas, in particular in John 20. Uh, some doubted. Uh, some were like, eh, I don't know about this. Uh, but they worshiped him. And then Jesus, um, as he's standing on this mountain, and I love this picture. You can just see, you can actually almost see the curvature of the earth back there. It's this big, wide view. And Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So he declares here that the outcome of what has just happened, that he uh, he came into Jerusalem. He died on the cross for sin. Uh, he rose from the dead um, and he is victorious. And he is standing now, the risen savior with his disciples. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He is the king. He is the Lord. Uh, his resurrection, uh, him being raised from the dead. He has conquered death and hell. He has uh, bound uh, the strong man. He is uh, the victor over sin and death and Satan, uh, and all authority in heaven and on earth is in his hands now. And so as Lord, as the one now who reigns supreme over all powers, who is uh, nothing will stand against him, um, the one who has all authority, he com commissions his disciples to go. He commissions them then to do something. Um, it says, go therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. So he tells them uh, to go therefore. And the way this reads, it seems like maybe go is the, the command here. But if you're, if you're reading it in its original language, the the main phrase here, the main uh, 
verb that's bearing the sort of action of this entire command is make disciples. Uh, that is what Jesus is telling his apostles, his disciples to do, is to make disciples. So it's sort of a, all of these other things are kind of around that, describing that. So going, or as you go, or wherever you go, um, you make disciples. Um, and then the way you do that, you baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You welcome them into the body of Christ, into the family of God. You um, give them this sacrament of uh, the cleansing grace of God. Um, and you teach them to observe all that I have commanded. We uh, usher people along in um, walking with the Lord, in walking with the Holy Spirit, and in becoming more like him, uh, observing all that he has commanded. Um, and then the promise, behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Uh, the meeting of God with this, the, the sort of other side of this is that God in us making disciples and baptizing and teaching, God supplies the Holy Spirit and he, and he is with us. Uh, in the, John actually says that uh, in the person of the Holy Spirit, the Father and Son are even fully with us. Uh, they are with us to the end of the age. And so Jesus is commissioning his disciples here. Um, he, is, he is king of everything. He is Lord of all. And he says, go where, wherever, whenever, however, and make disciples. Every nation, baptize them, uh, cleanse, cleansing them, and teaching them to observe everything he commanded. And he promises that the, the Holy Spirit will come and that he will be with us to the very end of the age. This is, this is his sort of last word. This is his um, final command. And in, in the book of uh, Matthew here, that's, that's it. That's... I am with you to the end of the age, the end of the book. That's, that's how Matthew closes his gospel. Um, and this, this command of Jesus uh, really does form a, a central driving uh, force for us as the church, for us as Christians. Make disciples. This is a, this is a fundamental command, a fundamental commission that we bear. Uh, if we are in Christ. Um, and it is called the Great Commission because uh, it is this, um, this, yeah, this fundamental commission that has gone with the church and has really formed our, our identity and our fundamental sense of what we are doing in the world, like why we are still here. Um, it is to make disciples, baptizing, teaching, um, and knowing that God is with us. So uh, to sort of summarize all of that, the teaching fairly simply is that making disciples is the heart of Jesus's great commission. All of, all of the other things, those are all around it. Those are all um, how and why and when and where and those kind of things. But the command is to make disciples. That, that is the commission, make disciples. I mean, so as this, at the heart of Jesus's great commission, what we're going to look at is we'll see in uh, Acts and in Paul's words, we see this, them literally pursuing this as their central activity. Um, and so on the day of Pentecost, when Peter gets up and preaches um, and people ask him what uh, they have to do, he says, repent and believe, be baptized. And the outcome of this is, so those who received his word were baptized and, they were at, and there were added that day about 3,000 souls. So they made 3,000 disciples. And I mean, if you follow along then right after that, they're teaching them. They are um, being together and all of these things. And, and then, then again, at the end of that, they're praising God, having favor with all the people and the Lord added to their number day by day, those who were being saved. That They are doing what they are doing. Uh, they are uh, worshiping together and doing all of these things. and disciples are being made, new disciples coming every day is essentially what that means, those who are being saved. If we look forward then in the story into Acts 6, there's this issue with uh, food distribution and the um, issue is brought to the apostles and they, they come up with a solution of having these seven guys, these uh, deacons take care of this. Um, and so when they have everything then back in order, what uh, 
Luke tells us in Acts is that the word of God continued to increase and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. So there, again, this, you, you encounter this, they encountered this difficulty, this roadblock, um, and the overcoming of it, the success of it is that disciples multiplied. That, 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 was, that was what they were trying to get to. That was what, that was what, what they were trying to make happen is ultimately that disciples would multiply. Um, and then looking in Paul's ministry um, and talking about how, um, how he did what he did and, and the kind of methodology that they went about. Uh, and just, this is kind of his first journey. It says, when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra, to Iconium, and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. Now you see there what's, what's at the bottom of all of this. He preached in one city, made many disciples went back through to the other cities he had preached in and strengthened the souls of the disciples he had made there and encouraged them to continue. It's the making of disciples, though, that is the fundamental activity that he's engaged in here. He's, he's fundamentally making disciples. Um, and then when he tells Timothy, his uh, son in the faith, uh, what he should be doing, what he should be about, in a very famous verse in 2 Timothy 2, it says, You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, and trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. That is uh, almost exactly the commission that Jesus gave his disciples, to, to make disciples, to take what you know and to teach it to others who will be able to teach others. That is the... The, the mechanism, the, the engine of disciple making. Um, and Paul tells his son in the faith, this is what I fundamentally want you to do. So we, we make disciples. Making disciples is the heart of Jesus's great commission. It's the heart of what he wanted uh, his disciples to do and what he wants his church to be. So take this away with you. Share what you know. Share what you know. Um, all of us if we have come to faith in Christ, well, we, know, we know something. Uh, we have learned some Bible verses. We've learned to pray. We've learned, uh, even if we don't have a ton of experience, we've been through some things. We've, we, we have learned things um, as we have gone. People showed us things. People taught us things. And discipleship means, making disciples is sharing what you know. You don't have to know a lot to be able to make a disciple and to tell them what little you know. I love the images of the old, this is from the Oregon Trail, the old wagon trains. Um, and I think these, for me at least, paint a good picture of what I mean by share what you know. Um, if you imagine a, a wagon train, you've got all of these people, all different ages, all different capabilities, different families with parents and kids and teens and elderly people and all kinds of stuff. Um, and you just, you have all of you, you've got your wagon, you've got your horses and the people with you, and you're just trying to get somewhere. Um, the, the people did what they knew. I mean, if somebody knew how to care for horses or somebody knew how to fix a wheel or somebody knew how to cook, whatever it was, uh, they did those things. Um, and the, the younger people, they shared what they knew with them. They, they showed them how to do those things. And eventually then those younger people are able to uh, fulfill those roles and to do those things. I think this is a, this journey uh, where we're just all trying to get somewhere together. Uh, some of us know how to do things. It it didn't matter if the person fixing the wheel knew how to cook the food. It, I mean, it didn't matter anything. If they knew how to fix a wheel, they could show someone how to fix a wheel. That's, that's all they needed to know to be able to show someone. Um, brothers and sisters, we are on a you know, wagon train, I guess, uh, into the kingdom of God. We, we are journeying together. That is what it means to be the church. That is what it means to be uh, disciples of Christ. We are making this journey together. Um, if you know something, you can share it. If you have grown at all in any way in Christ, you can make disciples. Um, and that is, that's a fundamental command that he has given us. It's a fundamental uh, commission that he has asked of us. So brothers and sisters, uh, let us share what we know and make disciples.